Right, first morning, Scottsdale National Golf Club. We're going to be talking uh, Gen 3 very, very soon. And I've got the, the brains of PXG alongside me. Uh, Brad Schweiger, have I got that name right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah I've done my best. And Mike Nicolette. Correct. So, before we get to Gen 3, just history-wise, how long have you two been in the golf industry itself? I believe you were a player, were you? Wow. <laughs> that, a long time. Yeah? Yeah. So, I'll start. Yeah, um, why don't you start? Um, I, I, as far as the golf industry, I, I started... Um, you know, golfing as a young kid, and yeah. I, I progressed along a little bit. I became a professional golfer. Yeah. Um, was lucky enough to work my way onto the PGA Tour, yeah. uh, winning one event. So that was nice. Fantastic. Uh, so Brad has a Masters under his belt, and I have two Masters <laughs> under mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I played in mine, and he actually attended class for his. So <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, anyway, so that, that kind of was a little bit of my, my background, my playing history, and uh, you know, my golf game kind of went south, and I decided to come west. I, I was okay. able to uh, take a job with a, a golf equipment manufacturer here in Phoenix. Yep. Uh, I worked in uh, that company for about 23 years. Yeah. And I uh, did various roles, but about my fifth or sixth year there, they brought me into the engineering side of things. Okay. And uh, I, I kind of went to school, learned the CAD systems, and was so able did, so to... So did you not have no history in that, Mike, prior to... to no, I, I'm not a degreed engineer. Wow. I, I call myself, you know... Uh, an apprentice, okay. an engineer, maybe. Right. <laughs> so, well, you know, he's got he got several years of on the job training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm very very fortunate uh, that I had you know a lot of really intelligent people that knew a lot about engineering. Yeah, um, in, and, in and my to, path. And, and to say this for Mike, I've been around. You know, I was educated, got a degree in mechanical engineering. I've been around a lot of intelligent people. Mike could have got a degree in engineering if he will, if if that was yeah, the path that he, he went down. Yeah. He's a very intelligent he, person. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. But I tried to be a golfer, so I don't know how intelligent I actually was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You realize so, at some point, anyway, it was time to, yeah. to change. And I'm happy with the career change in the end? Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, I, you know, if you're not playing golf for a living, designing clubs is the next best yeah. thing. So okay. it, it's really a dream come true for me. And, and anyway, I was there 23 years, and then uh, we've been with Bob now for going on six years. Actually, yeah. over six, yeah. yeah. And what about yourself? So I, a little more conventional background. I did play golf as a, as a youth and um, played a little bit in college, uh, not very well. And so I put my focus towards uh, um, getting a degree in mechanical engineering. And, I, and my grandfather actually was the one that, that motivated me to follow engineering. And we, we had a discussion when I was just a young kid. And he, he goes, do you realize that engineers design everything yeah. that's around you and I'm like even golf clubs he's like yeah even golf clubs and so I kind of the... I'm one of the weird guys who like set out to do that as a young yeah, kid and, 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 and went ahead and, and, and achieved that goal so um, after I got my degree I went to work for the same yeah. equipment company yeah. and so it's, it's in, ping isn't it We're like, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. it's a four letter word but yeah, we yeah. can say it yeah. <laughs> but I I, uh, I started out as a designer there um, right out of school and it was a the, the time there was a lot of opportunity um, you know and, and kind of jumped in and and worked my way up ended up uh, becoming the director of engineering kind of running the, the overall engineering um, department there and uh, you know left together at Mike to start PXG about six, yeah. six years ago. So, so. How, how long did you, you know uh, Bob Parsons prior to moving? Was that kind of, you I, known him a long while? Well, I, I knew him uh, going on in probably a couple of years. Yeah. You know, we played golf together and we're, I, right. I would say we were friends. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he kind of had this idea, a, a vague idea of what he wanted to do at that point. Yeah. And asked me, you know, basically if I was interested in Yeah. I, I tried my best to talk him out of it, you know, because it's a yeah, tough industry. The, yeah, tough industry. Yeah, and I said, look, I, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who knows who I am, and I know who I'm not. I, I can't do this. Right. I'm not an engineer. I'm, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a good designer, but I'm not an engineer. I said, but I know a guy who is your guy. This is. And he <laughs> said, who's that? <laughs> and I said, my boss. And he goes, you want to bring your boss over here? And I was like. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, and I'm not saying this with uh, any pretense. I said, Brad's probably the most valuable guy in our industry. I said, number one, I said, he, he's a degreed engineer, so he knows all the, the technical aspects of designing a golf club. I said, but he's been managing uh, a department of over 70 people and bringing all these products to the market. Uh, and not only in engineering, but he, you know, was in charge of our R and D department. He right. was in charge of our analysis and testing. I said he's got, you know, a master's in business. I said, but he's a forward-thinking guy. And I said wow. he 
he's probably the most valuable guy in the golf industry is relative to designing that's, equipment. That's some high phrase. So, <laughs> I, 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 no one I'm not saying that because if Brad's not here, I'm going to yeah, say yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've been around nice, a lot yeah. of people and a lot of the guys that are at the high levels in yeah. different wow. you know uh, companies, and they don't all bring to the table what Brad, what Brad brings. Brad so uh, we were you know high praise. Brad. Yeah, 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 high praise. Uh, so so you, you meet Bob. He persuades you to come over. As I understand it, there's no kind of there's no time scale, there's no limitation on budget. Is that kind of the engineer's dream? And yeah, well, that was you definitely make? one of the reasons that that we decided to kind of take the opportunity. You know, when when as Mike said, when he first met and, and talked with Bob, he actually tried to to talk him out of it. And then, you know, Bob's a, a pretty persuasive guy. You know, didn't want to take no for an answer. And one of the things that attracted us was just the the blue sky opportunity. You yep. know, the the idea to build something from the ground up and do it in a way that was different than everybody yeah. else in the marketplace. You know, we, we love golf and we love what we're doing and, and our former company was a great company, but we, um, you know, like, like many of the current, uh, manufacturers that exist, it, it became a, a little bit of, um, a repetitive story. Yeah. It's like, Hey, it's like, Hey, there's, you, you have a launch, you know, when the launch is and yeah. you kind of back everything out from a schedule standpoint, yeah. you, you target it from a, from a marketing standpoint, where you want to position the, the product, so yeah. you have very you know stringent cost targets yeah, and all that so stuff, and so you're, reverse, so you're injuring everything like so in that, within you know very stringent constraints. And, yeah. the, and the idea that that Bob kind of put to us is like, what if you know you had no constraints? We, there was no time limits. We just really worked on trying to create the very best possible product we could. We yeah. figured out what it costs, and then we decide how much we're going to charge yeah, for yeah. it. You know, so yeah, it's very different and, strategy. Yeah, yeah. And and to this day, it's still. The way we operate, the, you know, yeah, it's, it's, we don't answer. have, in my old life, I used to be on a committee <clears throat> that would set like what we call a five-year product plan. And, you know, we'd set all that stuff, yeah. you know, now we don't really have any of that. We just start yeah, developing nice. concepts and ideas and, and when trying to develop it. And when we get them to a point that we think they're ready to take into a commercial product, then we put a little bit of planning into and it and try to, yeah. try, try to bring it to market. And, and one of the things I would like to say though, too, is you know, the idea of no con time constraints doesn't mean that we're just, you know, not not working. In fact, yeah, we yeah. work our tail right. off. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're, we're going that. as fast yeah. as we possibly can. Yeah. The idea, yeah. the, but the thing is, is like when when it's when it's it's we're not going to bring something no, to market that's that. not yeah. ready. No, you know, sense. so yeah, it's good. It's good to hear from a consumer's perspective. Isn't it? They want to see <laughs> right rather than just putting product on the shelf. It's yeah. something when when change yeah. happens, and we'll talk about. Gen yeah, 3. and that's yeah. something that we're really proud of in Gen Three. I mean, we, we, I think we're, Mike and I are both very proud of our accomplishments that we've done with PXG so far. You know, the the technology that we've introduced has really, um, you know, changed the marketplace yeah. and and. You know, it wasn't just our ideas either. Bob had a big play mm -hmm. in, in what right. what we came up with. In fact, you know, if you go back to the beginning of our very first iron, um, you know, he he was the one that set a lot of the the the, the concept or a lot of the I guess the the strategic direction on what we were trying to achieve with that design. Yeah. You know, he gave us some guidelines. He's like, I want something that looks like a blade, but is more forgiving than cavity back. It goes longer than everything else that's on the marketplace. Feels better than anything I ever hit before. <laughs> Looks amazing, yeah. distinctive, you sexy. Go. You know yeah. all these all these that. things. And so you know that I, I always tell people all the time. If he just said, "Hey, just go design the best club you can," I don't know if we would have ended up where right. we were. It was it was because of you know his vision on like what he thought would make a really good yeah, golf yeah. club that definitely had a, a well, role in what we try to do. To do today. And so, uh, last question on sort of your history with the company. So, f so five years ago, six years ago, first day in the office. <laughs> list of priorities and you, you where did it all start what was the first point of start Can well you know? I, I just kind of told the story we, we he goes he goes look i want you guys to focus on irons first right and and he goes this is what i would like to see in the iron and, and he kind of listed off those things that i already talked about he wanted it to to be to look like a blade he had always played blades but Not but he things. loved the look of them he yeah. loved the feel of them but you know like many of us yeah. he, he, he needed a bit more forgiveness yeah, so yeah. he goes i want something that looks like a blade but is more forgiving than a cavity right. back yeah, and he I goes, went, whoa, and, Bob, hang on a yeah, minute. I yeah. said, uh, those are polar opposites, <laughs> they, what they you just said, yeah, right? Yeah. And he, yeah. he goes, uh, your job, brother, not mine. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, we, we left the room, and, and I immediately, I remember walking out of the room, and I told Michael, I'm like, well, if we're going to make it look like a blade, but be more forgiving than a cavity back, we're going to have to make it hollow, because we got to get the mass right. out of the middle. Okay. Yeah. And I go, but the problem is is generally when you hollow stuff out, it feels bad and he yeah. wants it to feel better than anything else. So yeah. that's going to be the challenge, right? It's like, how do we make it, 
How do we make it achieve all those things? A distance product, very forgiving, and still feel amazing. And so, you know, with our Gen 1 product, that's what we were focused on initially. It was like, hey, we hollowed it out. We got some pretty good performance, but it didn't feel very good. And so that was like the initial, how do we make this feel better? And we came up with uh, filling the cavity with the TPE material all the way up so it's like under compression and yeah. it created a very unique feel i mean all it took was one shot and it felt completely yeah, yeah. different than yeah. anything else you ever hit before and so that's what put us on the map as we progressed and we came out with gen 2 we we, we did all kinds of research and many 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 prototypes to try to figure out how do we make it better and um we did a lot of focus with materials on the outside of the club structure design and and we didn't find a lot of fruit you know we were and so what we realized is that you know some of the performance gains that we're going to get we had to focus on the inside Inside. of the club and And so so we changed in gen 2 we came out with our core 2 material which was um an improvement um but you know as we as we as we continue to focus on materials and polymers and learn a lot more about the 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 behavior of polymers um then we figured out a way to make it even better and that's that's where we are now with gen 3 and and we have our what we're calling our impact reactor which is powered by um, extreme dual core technology and we've really we kind of taken a little bit of almost like golf ball style construction and put it inside I'm of the sorry. golf club and so we have this this really soft high extremely high cor um core material that when you when you hit it it loads and it it, it, it instead of absorbing or taking away energy it acts more like a super ball and it just stores and then rebounds that it. that energy back in the golf ball but it allows the face to move a bit, bit more. Our face is 58 thousandths. It's an extremely thin face. And we have, we've also added a cutout around the perimeter of the face geometry to really activate the face. So we get this, this whole system to, to load and store that potential energy and then rebound it back into the golf ball. Mm-hmm. And so in order to support that structure, we actually have a secondary layer of material that's a, um, a little bit st- a stronger material that's on the outside directly behind the face. And so all the materials work together to provide the strength that we need along with the 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 flex and the and the 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 potential energy rebound back into the golf ball and the thinner the face again is just the thinner the face the more sort of flexibility that's the that's yeah the yeah you, yes. that you got to be able to store the energy and then rebound it back, back yeah. into the golf ball so. and we've got that in gen 3 in abundance yeah. have we yeah so like you know we got a little bit mike why don't you show them a little bit of yeah. the progression of the uh, materials sure so uh, anyway uh so this is our TPE material. This was Gen 1 material. And again, uh, the, the main uh, idea here was to try to dampen vibration in the club head. So yep. we found a material that really you know, dampens vibration. And if you drop it, you can see that there's really not much uh, rebound in that material. So the material itself is absorbing the energy, but it's also absorbing the sound and, and it gave us a really unique feel. Uh, when we went to Gen 2, we started to look to get more ball speed, and we went with a, a different material that's a much higher COR. So uh, if we drop this, you'll notice that it, it rebounds significantly yeah. higher, but also it has a, a, a firmer, firmer sound. sound. Yeah, yeah. Right? So now if we go to our Gen 3 material, yeah. this is an extremely high COR material, and, and you'll notice that very quiet and wow. very good rebound so if even we showing to, the difference of those so two. here's the difference of gen 2 gen 3 and that's what we're seeing yeah. when the ball comes off the face wow. of the club yeah. it's amazing the performance benefit that this gives us yeah yeah it's fantastic yeah. and so that the uh and if you look at the cross section here you can see what we were talking about with the dual core technology so that the, this material right here this black material is is the material that mike was just showing yeah yeah and then we have our higher strength polymer material sits that, that front, sits in the front portion the right there. So, that's and the and this and this works together to provide but, the strength that you need along with the the rebound yeah. velocity but, that you want. And, and how does that impact on sort of forgiveness across the club face? Obviously, it's a, we're trying to. Yeah, so that that's one of the things that we've developed into our products, and I think you know it's it's actually one of the side benefits that that our clubs create because of the way that we structure that we create that structure and we provide support to the overall face structure we get a um in my past life we always just used to look at inertia and inertia definitely has a role in the the higher moi that you make the golf club you resist you reduce the twisting offs in her hits and that's one way to make the club play more forgiving okay. and that's why you know our xp model and our p model are more forgiving than our t model but one of the things that all of our products uh 
share is this this technology inside the club, which helps kind of offset also some of the the mishit geometry that you get. And so, you know, when we when we first started talking about the sweet spot, the size of Texas, and those things, it's it's because we really saw and we continue to see a a a uh, a higher level of forgiveness on off center hits than what you would normally expect right. from a, from a club that has that level of inertia. So right. so the the technology not only helps maximize the speed off the center but it creates a very consistent across mm. uh, performance across the entire face yeah, which is what was average golfers want yeah it? <laughs> that's the help we yeah need. i mean we we hear it all the time you know it's like i hit that way out on the toe and it's yeah, still, still got on the green. yeah, yeah so, it's a big so that's deal, isn't it? yeah it's a big deal and i I'm, i get to try these clubs in about an hour's time yeah. What, what, what are you what are your thoughts on what, what am I going to leave feeling what's the what's the one overriding thing well, you would expect from well me? hopefully you know you'll notice something in the very first hit you yeah. know that, that it's just it's something that feels totally unique and different than anything you hit before um, it's that that's for me when I talk to people I'm always like when I fell in love with the game of golf it wasn't necessarily because I was trying to shoot a super low score when I first like yeah. fell in love with the game it was because you know that that impact sensation that you get when you hit it a ball yeah. like solid you're Sweet. like you're like wow that is yeah, really yeah, fun that, yeah. that's really fun <laughs> yeah. and so at the end of the day that's one of the things that I'm really proud about that we do in our irons and I think you know to be quite frank like many of our competitors have lost that 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 piece of it but not to talk about the competition it's just like you I hear them all the time you hit these shots and they sound terrible and I'm yeah. like what you know, golf is supposed to be fun. You know, yeah. it's like you're supposed to enjoy that yeah. impact experience, not go, wow, that hurt my ears or wow, yeah, yeah. that felt yeah. clanky or whatever, you know. So hopefully that's the first thing that you take away yeah. is that you hit it and you're like, wow, that felt amazing. Um, I think the next thing that you'll see is incredibly fast ball speeds and really long distance. Yeah. And, um, you know, find it, as we talked about, easy to hit. Uh, I, I look forward to it. I can't wait to try it, to be honest I am you. sure you're going to find more distance. Yeah. 100% <laughs> yeah. confident. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, for myself personally, uh, Gen 2 to Gen 3, I'm picking up with the P iron probably six to seven yards. Uh, with the XP iron, I'm hitting almost 20 yards further. Oh. It is crazy. We, we, did some, we did some things with the XP. Um, obviously, all the clubs have the technology that we've already talked about with the, um, with the uh the impact reactor core and with the XP we made that as large as possible to get as much energy out of it as possible but then we've also done some things with a lot of testing and and working with with players to really optimize the the specs to try to help you know those players that maybe lost a few yards over the yeah. years and so we've we're, we're we're we've instructed our fitters and we we have a wide array of shaft options and we've we've really optimized it to to provide some lighter weight options where they can go a little bit lighter in weight, um, slightly longer in length. We've we've strengthened the specs a little bit on those clubs, but the goal th throughout all three sets was to maintain the same max height. So even though um, you have a little bit stronger loss, it's it's it, we maintain Still the same kind of max right. height. And like Mike said, those XPs, they deliver it, explosive distance. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's a lot of fun <laughs> in the seven iron. Yeah, uh, it's uh, a like, lot of fun. <laughs> I look forward to it. I can't yeah. wait. Like you said, they love because this is the first time I've seen them as well yeah. on the table just now, and they look fantastic. But that will come in the uh, separate review coming shortly. Um, and again, just a, a similar question, really. A lot of my audience uh, have maybe not who've not tried PXG clubs. Um, what would what do you think it impressed them again? Is it a similar sort of answer really that we've just had, isn't it? I mean, they've they've never tried them. There's often the kind of that they're they're they're, uh, they're scared to try almost sometimes. I think. And what what would be the thing to encourage them to have a go? Well, look, I I know that uh, the price sets people yeah. back right out of the box. Yeah. But if you can get over the price, it's one of these things that when you buy a set of clubs, you're probably going to have them for four to six years. Yep. You know, if you start to to think about what it costs per year to play this set of clubs, if you want to play the best golf club that lives on the face of the yeah. earth, you need to try PXGs because yeah. the experience of that impact Brad alluded to earlier is like nothing else that yeah. lives out there. So I, I would say, you know, give the clubs a try. You are going to love them. Yeah. If you can get over the initial yeah. shock factor, the yeah. price tag, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you are going to, I guess it's probably like driving, you know, a, a Lamborghini, you know, when yeah. you look at it, you go, oh, that's not going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. And for most people, yeah. it is not going to yeah, happen. Yeah. But if you got in and drove one, you go, I really want these. <laughs> you know? yeah. No, I'd agree with that. But the, the thing I would say, and I, I think about it all the time, for many of us out there, golf is a passion and it's something that we spend so much time doing. And, and if, if you if you think about you know the way that it helps enjoy improve and enjoy the experience, yeah. 
Um, you know, they, and, and you think about like Mike said, you have them for many, many years and you start to think about the cost per round or whatever. It's yeah. not, it, it starts to become, you know, a, a, a little bit easier pill to swallow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Uh, right, that's Gen 3. Just a quick one on uh, the sort of governing bodies and, and limitations and um, in terms of technology. How much room have we got to sort of move things forward over the over the years? Is it still well, a lot to play with? You know, we one of the things every time we develop a new product, we're always like, "Wow, you know, what are we going to do next?" And, yeah. And uh, you know, somehow we continue to find a way to to make product better. In this particular case, we made a huge jump, in my opinion, from Gen two to Gen three. Right. And and. You know, now we've really created a problem for ourselves. Yeah, right? yeah, we're, we're, next, yeah. It's, it's so truth. I don't have the answer for you right now. Yeah. I'm just hopeful that we'll figure out a way. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> um, and and what, what denotes the, the sort of perfect golf club? Is, is, there a, a, is there a scientific formula that, that you work towards or is it? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you want the, the, a golf club needs to do a few things. It's, it, it you know. Assuming that you're playing by the rules, I mean, you could have a club where you could make any swing and the shot yeah. came up. Or that, that's not really golf. You know, golf requires some level of skill. So if we're going to say we're going to abide by the traditions and, and of golf, and that you know you have to, we're trying to make it a little bit easier, but you still have to have some level of skill to play it. So that with that kind of parameter, I would say you want a club that feels amazing and gives you the most amount of distance as possible and the greatest amount of forgiveness as possible, and yeah. you know. But you know that. Let me sum I don't it know. up for you guys. Yeah, yeah, let me show you. Yeah, PXG. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's perfect. Um, last few questions. Um, so, I, I, my thing is, I make uh, content for YouTube, and uh, one of the comments that is frequently made is um, the, the the critics, if you like, will say that clubs are no different now than they were ten years ago. Let's say, um, as engineers, knowing what you know. What, what do you think of that statement? Well, that's clubs are very different than they were ten years ago. Yeah. I mean, the the uh, uh, and that's you know even just a few years ago, you know the whole industry is kind of shifting towards more you know in the iron category, for example, more hollow body products yeah. and trying to activate the face and get more speed out of the yeah. irons. You know that um, you know many many years ago. Um, the the it was very popular to just make these cavity back products that we're just trying to focus just on inertia and get the mass of the perimeter and while they still exist it's it it's you know I, I think we have had a big impact in the industry yeah. and kind of sh looking at like different ways of designing irons and kind of pushing the 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 technology forward so that you know now most most of the high performance products are all you know hollow body yeah you get actually better inertia characteristics because you're getting the mass all the way to the perimeters and you're and you're also able to create a structure that delivers higher speeds and, and better performance into the golf ball. So there's without doubt changes. Yeah, yeah but the, one of the drawbacks of the, the just the other hollow body products that, that don't have um, the same type of technologies that we have is that you you can get good performance out of the centers, but you 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 start to get a, a lot of variation as you miss it across the face. And we talked about that earlier. That's one of the really beauties of our technology is that you get a more consistent yeah. performance across the entire face. So sort of front to back dispersions and things that yeah. were perhaps lacking <clears throat> in other clubs and yeah. previous that we've seen, isn't it? Really, yeah. um, that's fantastic. Um, last, literally, last two questions. Coolest thing about working at PXG. The coolest thing about working at PXG was the best thing about working here. Just the whole brand itself. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just PXG is cool. I yeah. mean, the logo is cool. Yeah. The hanging out with Bob is cool. Yeah. You know, uh, so I mean, it, if you walk into our facility, it's just state of the art everywhere you go. It's just yeah. a, it's a, the whole thing is cool. Well, mm -hmm. I, I arrived here yesterday, and it's just it's it's mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. it really is mind blowing. The whole thing is. Uh, well, it took me literally takes your breath away in terms of uh, I mean all of the place. Look, it's one of those you things. Come here every day. That, that, again, I was friends with Bob before going to work, you know, with him, and uh, it's been an honor to yeah. to work with him because he pulls out the best of you. Yeah. Now, at times you want to like go home and hit your hand with a hammer or something <laughs> because uh, he he's pretty demanding in in what his expectations, yeah, I but. Can 
he really pulls the best out yeah. of you and he knows how to get the best out of his people. Yeah. I missed yeah. that question earlier on actually when we were talking about the PXC thing. He seems a very inspirational kind of character to be mm -hmm. around. Is that would that be one, one of the reasons I came to work for him is because of his story. I mean he it I I I'm, it's kind of an incredible story, self made, you know, yeah. and you know, went from as he would say, failing the fifth grade to becoming yeah. a self-made billionaire. That's I mean, they, some story, hey, I he, 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 he had some, you know, pretty, um, big moments in his life where it had some lasting effects, you know, obviously, uh, as a, as a going through the Marines, Marines and, yeah. and going through Vietnam yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, some pretty traumatic experiences. But, you know, after that, he see, he'll, he gives the credit to the Marine Corps for changing him. And yeah. he came back with a different mindset and he, you know, worked his way through school and actually graduated with honors. And um, and one of the things I think is amazing is just, you know, he started out as an accountant. You know, he got his degree in accounting and he was yeah. working as, and most people will go through life work their, as, an their, as an accountant, yeah, you yeah. know, and it's a good job and it's a great thing. But he he took it the extra step and he, he taught himself how to program and yeah, he started writing right. accounting software because that's what he knew about. Yeah. And he did it on his own time in his basement so you know, so just, so okay, just, think, you yeah. know, he worked his tail off to get to where he's at. Yeah. You know, it was nobody just came along and just gave him anything. Yeah. You know, he yeah. did it. He he worked it all himself. And and you know, I I like to think that, and I know Mike is extremely hard work. I am as well. And so you know, it, it's it's just an inspir as you say, it's inspiration to kind of be around somebody like that that knows. And and one of the reasons, as Mike says, he's not he pulls the best out of people because you know he didn't get where he was at by anything yeah. easy you know yeah, he yeah. knew he had to Pushing work for it. All the so, time, yeah. so you know it, it, it sometimes it takes a lot of hard work to get to where mm -hmm. you want to get to so That's fantastic well good stuff yeah last one will we ever see an ultimate golf club or is it the holy grail is it we just keep on pushing forward well, you know, I like to think from my own job security that we're never going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> this might be as close as we're going to get. Yeah, yeah. No, that's absolutely fantastic. It was uh, a pleasure to talk to both of you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And like I said, I can't wait to go and give these things a hit in the next hour or so. Right. So thank you for watching. Comments down below. And uh, I'll see you all very, very soon. And right. like I said, thank yeah, you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Really, really enjoyed all that. Right. Thank you.